for I hope you feel good about yourself for being here this long I know I feel good about myself for holding on four days of strategic fervent prayer and um bible study strategy prayer 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 um encouragement 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 um, so I pray that you feel encouraged um, just being here these ne- these past four days. Hey, Sister Tiffany. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, I hope that you all feel encouraged and proud of yourselves for being here for four consistent days. It takes a lot. And it just, I, I know I say this every time, but I want you all to know that your desire for, for, for God and to grow and to have understanding in this season means that it is happening. It is coming to fruition because you are here. You're showing up, you're present and God honors those things because we ain't here doing nothing but talking about the Lord. We ain't doing nothing crazy. We ain't doing nothing secular. We not gospel. We not, we not keep keying. We are where well, we keep in the Lord, but we're just having a good time in God. And that's what it's about. And it's happening at the, at the hours right before we lay our head down and go to bed. So that is a beautiful time. So um, as always, we'll open up with a little bit of prayer. I'm um, just opening prayer. And then we'll touch on a recap just to refresh ourselves from yesterday. And we're going to go straight in. Like I said on yesterday, the first day was like an opening, what everything was about to let people know what was going on. Um, Day two was a little bit of that and a little more heavier on the teaching of what different dynamics are in singleness. And then three, we was hitting with prayer. Yesterday, we had some prayer strategies. From day on, we're going to be going in. All right, so let every heart pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you. We honor you. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you for this virtual temple. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord God. We thank you for our submission to you and that you receive it and you have honored it. I thank you, Lord God, that your grace and mercy has kept us on this whole day, Lord God, and all the hours spent today of us driving or working or with our children, our family, our loved ones on our jobs. You have kept us and kept our mind. Lord God, there's so much craziness and calamity going on. We know that some of it is is supposed to happen because it is your will. Lord God, so we just ask that you just keep us in these trying times. We just ask that you let us lean on you for understanding and not ourselves, Lord God, that we come to you and that our relationship grows in you because of our desire for you, Lord God. We thank you. We seek you first, the kingdom of heaven and all of your righteousness, Lord God, and we know you will add everything else to us that we need and desire, as your word so eloquently states. So, Lord God, we thank you. We love you. Ask for forgiveness of sin. We cast every burden, every weight to the wayside, Lord God and to the wayside does not mean we are suppressing it but we are casting the care on you because we are here for in, in submission to you to your name lord god to give you glory and to receive information to receive download to receive revelation to be strengthened up lord god so we thank you we give that burden to you and lord god forgive us of anything that we have fallen short in today if we have maybe said something we shouldn't have said any regret we may be carrying any lie we may have said any 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 evil seed we may have sown with our words or god out of frustration, stress, regret, anger, selfishness, pride, whatever that may be, Lord God, forgive us of it, Lord God. Wipe our hands clean. And we thank you, Lord God, that you receive our forgiveness. And you cast those things to the sea of forgiveness to never place in your mind again. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We will not rob you of your grace. We will thank you for your grace, being encouraged that you're giving us another chance. And we pray that we have the strength and the um, and the mindset being set on things above to do well the next test and throughout the rest of this season, because we're going to finish strong. So Lord God, we thank you. We love you and we honor you and it is in jesus christ's name our lord and savior's name we pray amen hallelujah thank you lord jesus i don't know about y'all but when i be praying so i be getting warm i try to wear some a little breezy you see tonight i was in a turtleneck who was i thinking but i came from church so i was coming home and didn't want to feel rushed so i just left on what i had on hallelujah ah Y'all, I'm so thankful for the presence of the Lord. I'm sorry. I just got to stop. I'm so thankful. Aren't you just thankful? We, we Listen, we know we got to recap, but aren't you just thankful for the presence of the Lord? Aren't you just thankful that you don't got to be around you, you? I thank God for the for the harp and the instrument because it's in his word, but you don't got to have an organ to push you through. You get, you get in there with your relationship with God and you just sit. And the and you just feel his presence. You ever feel his presence at work? You got to go to the bathroom real quick, 
and with a pray and, you know, or do a little two step and try to be quiet when you hear somebody open the bathroom door and you just be like, God, I thank you, Lord, I thank you. You just be praying, you know, oh man, when I used to work in um different call centers and you sit in them cubicles and you just feel the Lord and it'd always be when I'm not having the best day and I'd be like, God, just, I was mean mugging everybody that walked in here because I didn't want to be here this morning. And then God just do something with you. You got to go to the bathroom and he humble you a little bit and you come back out just, just a smiling and just a whole new person. People don't understand, you know, but I just, I thank God for those humbling experiences and you get to just experience his presence and he just, ah, it's so refreshing. <laughs> it's so refreshing. Praise God. It's so refreshing. Um, So I pray that you just experience God you, even and if you already do I pray you experience God even the more throughout your day all day be that peculiar one that the Bible talks about you know it might be crazy but I'm gonna praise my God and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna serve him and I'm gonna have my moment at my job now my office is all glass windows so I'll be trying to be trying to behave amen but God is good nonetheless what was that I think it's all kingdom fellowship people on here right now and uh so she passed Tina. Oh, we all on Sunday. She said the announcement. Well, the announcement is God is just good. Listen, He's just good. I think sister. I think lyric posted that video. They done went viral, y'all. So God is just He is. He's just good. He's just good. That's the recap, right? He's just good. God is just good. Amen. Well. Like I said, I want to spend the majority of the time in prayer because the longer, the more days we're here as we finish out, the time of prayer is going to, is going to increase the duration of time. Amen. To build up our reverence, to build up our endurance in the spirit, to pray longer. And this is only just, as we do this collectively for us, as we gather on one accord, does our strength in numbers, but also for you to take that into your personal life if you don't already. And if you do, to do it more, know that if you're doing these things amongst the people, God's calling you to do it even more on when you're on your own. Because when you get by yourselves, when the stuff starts to doom, 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 starts to hit, and we want to do this stuff more, not this stuff, oh Lord, but these things of God more in our personal lives. Get a little area in your room, build yourself a small altar, some space that you can go to at home, have a, have a designated space. This is my little well, Miss Corner right now, but my little rug beside my bed be my little space or my bathroom. It's always a rug somewhere. I don't know what that's about, but praise God. Anywho, let us move on. Okay, quick recap. Yesterday, yesterday, I decided. Okay, <laughs> yesterday was about fleeing, and then and the I guess the title of yesterday was "We Must Flee and We Will Flee." We talked about protecting our spirit that everyone can't be for us and we can't be for everybody necessarily and we and we didn't we talked about how we didn't mean that and that does not mean to be proudful or to be prideful to be selfish or boastful in any way but just means that you know because we don't want to be prideful because god resists the proud but it, it is instead we're understanding that we are learning things of god and we are becoming more and more like christ and we are falling more and more in love with his character as we see his change as we see as we see a transformational change in us that we're dying to things and when you start dying to things people that are still living in things you died in are no good to you the bible says bad company corrupts what good character and good is righteousness so we want to make sure that we are protecting those things and then we also just uh you know re-implemented the verses we've been focusing on second timothy 2 21 colossians 3 psalm 37 and we just reiterated those we talked about how we don't want to be foolish regarding our flesh. Amen. Not putting ourselves in sticky situations and hot temper situations and lying to ourselves, thinking that we're going to be okay. Only giving the devil access to say, or, 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 or a door in to say, you know, you're a strong Christian. You can do this. And then we slip and fall. And then we're in condemnation. And sometimes we can sit there for set for a long period of time. Before we know it, time done passed by and not necessarily having to play catch up. Amen. But we don't want to miss out on things on God when we have an opportunity to do the right thing with the free will he gives us. Amen. And we're thankful because in that free will, we know that he provides us ways of escape. Amen. So we talked about having good community. 
we talked about um, just cherishing those things of God um, and, and that refraining and fleeing is not considered weak, but it's actually considered strong, that we don't act as the world and as the culture wants to act and move, but we follow the move of God, which means we have to sit back in prayer and really pray fervently and spend time fasting. And we talked about why we need to fast, because we need to be dying to ourselves to be able to hear what God is saying. If we're listening to so much stuff in the world, so much carnality, it clogs us up and keeps us from hearing things of God. Amen. So we talked about that. We talked a little bit about the evildoers we were kind of talking about in Proverbs uh, 4, how it talks about if you find yourself in a dangerous situation, you know, get out of there quickly. We talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, how it talks about the youthful lust, that a lot of times that strong desire we have to do wrong, to do sin, the Bible um, explains it as a young person's uh, lust. They they had that strong desire to want to do something which is considered uncontrolled. And we know that we have the fruit of the spirit and in the fruit of the spirit is self-control. So we want to practice those things. Amen. And practice those things. It takes prayer. It takes fasting. It takes a lifestyle of worship and being amongst the body of Christ. We talked briefly about isolation is not of God. God is never going to intentionally isolate you from all people and just make you weird somewhere. That's not God. You may have moments of, 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 um, I don't really like solitude, but when it's God dealing with you, you know, we know God is, he's, he's dealing with you one-on-one -on -one. that does happen more. God will give righteous judgment to you to pull you from some things, which I consider sometimes seasons of stripping, but we should not be able to, we should not be, um, can feel like we're exiled or we exile ourselves from the, the, the community of God, the body of Christ. Amen. Because every, everyone's needed in the body. It's the body. You might be the foot and you leaving. We can't walk right. Things get off balance. We want to be on one accord. Amen. So those are a few things we talked about yesterday. Um, we went really, really deep into prayer. Y'all Oh, like I said, y'all's prayers got me through the day because the testing was real. So we prayed, um, we went through, a, a, I shared a strategy that some of y'all may have already been familiar with, with how to worship and pray scripture, where you worship for a certain amount of time. For the short period of time we had yesterday, we worshiped for a minute straight, and then we we declared and prayed the scriptures we've been focusing on. We worship for a minute straight, declared and prayed the scripture, worship for a minute straight, and then we um ask God to fill us with the word so that way the word of God be written on the tablets of our heart. So that's just a strategy to keep in mind if you're having a hard time praying to get in there and find some scripture that you know. I don't care if it's John 3, 16. Worship the Lord for a duration of time. I usually suggest 35 minutes if you don't have a strong endurance, amen, or used to doing that and pray and worship the Lord. And worship is speaking of the King, speaking of Yahshua, speaking of him. And, and then you read the verse and, and focus on that, declaring that verse, that scripture over yourself. You know, if it's John 3, 16, then you're going to declare, Lord, you know, it's basically more of a thankful prayer. I thank you for sending your son to die for my sins, that I have been made new through his sacrifice of death, you know, death and resurrection. You want to pray those things and then worship God. And then you seal with God, fill me with your word. Okay. So we shared that strategy, which was really, really good. And yeah, so that's the end of the recap. Um, if anyone that was here yesterday and you want to share anything that you took away or that really encouraged you from yesterday, feel free to do so for anybody that maybe wasn't here. If not, we'll move forward. For me, I really did like the, um, the strategy of praying for me that really helped me because I was damn near to praying like every day and that was a good strategy for me to start so I really did like it and I'm sure that would be people today it's the share for me he said I share that's how you know it um thank you for sharing that sister Tiffany that's how you know when God is really doing something because okay. we're encouraged to share I, it makes me think about in, in the Bible almost every single time in in the Bible which is this you're mainly going to find these in the gospels when Jesus did a miracle for someone where he heals us one free, what did he say? Now go and tell, go and share what the Lord God has done for you. The only time he did it was one time. He told him not to say nothing because it was, you know, he had the Pharisees and everybody was up in a, in a roar. That was one time he said, don't say nothing. He said, go be blessed, but be quiet. But other than that, he always is saying, go share. So that's how I would always indicate and I'm thankful for God's word being a help because I would indicate how I would know I wasn't crazy about something. When I experienced something of God, it's not just zeal. It's because you truly experienced the gospel. You truly experienced the word of the Lord and you're excited. You want to share and help somebody. 
You know, you get that discernment where you can now feel that someone's in the starting point that you used to be at before you knew what you knew. So you're like, uh-uh, girl, let me tell you something. This is something you can do. Amen. Because you're no longer there. So we praise God for your growth, Sister Tiffany. We praise God that you're able to now help and disciple somebody else in that. And God gets the glory out of that. That's what it's all about. I learned it from somebody. I shared it with you. You teaching them. That's how it goes. It's not about who doing what. It's just continue on pouring into the next cup, pouring, pouring, pouring as more comes to us. So that, that's how you get overflow. Praise God. All right. Um, let's get into day four. Day four, we're talking about a new thing. Let me take this recap down because we don't recap. Let's get into um, day four. Dang, we already at 926. Praise God. Well, let's go. Uh, day four, we're talking about a new thing. We're still on our same three scriptures. I'm going to read briefly, but I have two more I'm adding. But these two are mainly just for today. Feel free to keep them, if you will, to, you know, read them, study them. I encourage you to study them and um, meditate on them in your, in your alone time as well outside of our virtual meeting. Um, but there's two more scriptures I'm going to share. They're short. They're not, they're not long at all. But today we're tonight, excuse me, we're going to be talking about a new thing, a new thing. We hear that so much. If you grew up in church, like I, you hear that all the time, God's doing a new thing, new thing. And sometimes you go home and then you have to really shift it and change. Well, the thing about a new thing is we have to see it. And I love it because Isaiah tells us in, in uh, Isaiah 43, the scripture that we love so, 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 so much. I'm going to share it with y'all. Y'all been doing good with my little, my little screenshots. Praise God. I'm going to get on screen, Is this the right one? I oh, hear it. Go. Is that it? Praise God. Okay. So the word, of, the word of the Lord reads, it says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now, verse 18, we've been talking about that a lot. We talked about that in First Timothy, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 2, how it talks about, you know, uh, forgetting the latter things, the former things of our life. We don't want to pick up the old us. I don't want to pick up the old India. I don't want, we don't want to pick up the old Tiffany. We don't, we don't want to pick up the old Nikisha. We don't want to pick up the old Brie. We don't want to pick up the old us. The old me is hideous you hear me horrendous and when she tries to when that flesh crease on back up we gotta beat it cast it down okay so do not remember the things of old i love this and it says the, the verse for most of us know verse 19 behold i will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you know it question mark I'll even make a way, I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is the part that we have to make sure because sometimes when we leave the service or the revival and it was so high and the and the and the preacher or, or whoever's speaking or the or the person singing says this scripture, behold, I do a new thing, and we all go ah, take off doing doing church uh, Olympics around the church. We forget the rest of the verse. And it's not the speaker's fault, it's not at all. It's us being caught up in sometimes what goes what goes on. And that's why I like intimate stuff like this that trains us with you in our personal life. So in the midst of when so much is going on, when you may have 10 people that's just worshiping in, in, in emotions in the flesh, and you have to be able to have your own to sense when God is really, you know, doing something and be able to have God do something no matter what's going on because you're in the because you're in the room. I love it because it says, behold, I do, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And then he asks us a question. Shall you know it? And no, if anyone doesn't know, in the Bible, it means intimacy. Do you know, which means are you, are you intimate enough with God to be able to discern the time when he's shifting to do a new thing? Do you understand when he's doing a new thing in your life? Do you understand when he's doing a new thing regarding the world? Praise God. And then he says, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers and desert. So he's letting you know where the new thing usually takes place. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Those are those are uncommon. Those are uncommon things to happen, right? Uh, uh, a road in the wilderness is uncommon. It's wilderness. There's not a road, but God's. He said He's making a road because while we serve a, a miraculous uh, God that's known for doing the um, making the impossible possible things, so when we so, so when we're in seasons like this, especially in singleness, when God's doing a new thing in us, He's teaching us, you know, things that are considered new to us. We're learning things of God. We have to understand when things get rough and tough, and we feel like we're in the wilderness, and sometimes we are in wilderness seasons. We have to be able to pull this word back up because it's going to be written on our hearts tonight. Amen. That God, you're making a role in the wilderness and rivers in the desert again that's an uncommon thing so when god says he's doing a new thing it means it's going to be an uncommon thing that's going to happen i really hope you got that because that's juicy so when you're experiencing something dry and you feel like it's just dry 
and it's kind of difficult. I don't, I'm not gonna say difficult, but I don't really want to break down dry because it could mean different. It has the same understanding, dry is dry, but it could, you know, look different for different people. So I'll let pray, pray for the Lord will give you discernment in the name of Jesus to discern that for you if that's a time for you or whenever that time comes. But he's saying, I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So when we hear this scripture, behold, I do a new thing, and we start doing the church Olympics. Remember the next part of the verse. Shall you know it? Are you intimate with God? Are, are you in tune with God? Because when he does his new things, he's telling us he's going to make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He's going to do uncommon things. And that's the, that's the thing. Everybody's not going to catch the uncommon. When we hear the the the, the trumpet sound that, that's to, to alert the people of God that our, that our king is coming, everybody's not going to catch it. They've been, they've been saved for 29,000 years. Everybody's not going to catch it. We're going to catch it. We're going to make sure we catch it because we're going to dig in and understand the hidden things of God, the mysteries of God, and understand how to get into his presence. Amen. Amen. So so that's something we're going to be talking about tonight, and we're going to be praying through. We just, we just talked about it, but praying through. Praise God. The next one is Philippians 3. Um, I know we do these kind of quick, but I'm telling you, they're so packed with so much. It'll all come to us in, in due time. I promise you. Hallelujah. So the next one is Philippians 3, verse 13. This is one that we kind of know too. And I love this because this is Paul talking. And y'all, I like Paul. Paul was thug. Maybe that's why I like Paul. But, but I like him because he always gave um, realistic understanding with his teachings you know, I feel like if Paul was today, he wouldn't be the die and that and that type of like, pat, like type of preacher. He would just be talking and be like for real with you. And then the power of God would just be like so heavy. So I love it in here in verse 13. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to, to, to have uh, apprehended, which is to know everything. But one thing I do. Say it, say it, y'all. Forgetting those things which are behind. And what reaching forward to those things which are ahead. It backs up Colossians 3. Touch your mind things above, non things of the earth. So he's letting us know again. I know we've been focusing on this forgetting and, and, and doing and, and walking in the new and not looking to the latter things of our life because it's so important. Because almost every time, y'all can attest what I'm saying. Almost every time you go through something or something happens, it's an immediate desire an imme or immediate reaction thought to go do something of the old. Every time. Because why? That was our former life. That's what we knew before Christ. And a lot of us were in the world. Um, well, I'm going to say a, a lot of people walk in the world longer than they have been walking with Christ. And that's not a bad thing. It's just what it is, you know? So you got to understand if you, if you got, if you got some, some years of, of several years of, of walking in, in the flesh before you were with Christ, the enemy is going to hit you with that stuff. The moment something happens, the moment something gets slow, the moment some some ticks you, you know, and, and that's why we, and again, it's not to condemn, it's to uplift or convict if that's going to convict you, praise God, and we're going to pray that through, but to encourage us to know that we thankful for God's grace. Because how many times have we went back and thought something and we was like, oh God, but God kept us. Amen. It didn't take us out. Praise God. We looked the weapon dead in the face. We went to it and it still didn't, still didn't prosper. Praise God. So brethren, he's saying that I, I, one thing I do, this is one thing that I would boss. Paul said, this is one thing that I do get right now. I do get this one right. I be forgetting the things which are behind me and I reach forward to things which are ahead. Because he understands that I need God more than anything. I need Jesus more than anything. My past can't do nothing for me. I need Jesus. So I need God. And that's, that's us. That's our cry. That got to be our posture. God, we need you more than anything. We need you more than anything. Hallelujah. I lose my mind if I don't have the Holy Ghost. We need God more than anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need you more than anything. Praises be unto God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. He's so good. Thank you, Jesus. We need you more than anything. Ooh, say it for yourself right now. Don't let me be by myself. God, I need you more than anything. I need you, God. I need you, God. I need you, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I need you, Jesus, more than anything. Hallelujah. I need your spirit more than anything. Hallelujah. I need your spirit because your spirit makes me act right. Hallelujah. Come on. God, I need you more than anything. 
Thank you, Lord. All right. So today, uh, new things. And we're going to get into um, our prayer. We're going to get into our prayer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these up here real quick. Um, did y'all get those two scriptures? If not, I can put them back up and let you screenshot them. Philippians 3, 13. Here it is. Um, and then I can put Isaiah back up if you need it. It was Isaiah 43, 18, 19. I really want to make sure y'all get them um, if you can so you can go back. Praise God. So you can, you know, in your own time and, and get them. Praise God. Okay. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, ooh, Nikisha. Ooh. ooh. Let me get this out. We'll get to that later. <laughs> That's why your name popped up. But you pulled you pull on my spirit. You put on it. We'll, we, praise God. We'll get to that later. Thank you, God. I can't just know this, Nikisha. God, 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 God done pointed you out. He done point you out without a shadow of a doubt. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Ain't nothing nobody can do about it. He point he pointed you out. And he sorry, y'all. We gotta pause because when God's talking, we can't be stingy. And he wants our sister to know. God's pointed you out, and there's nothing you can do or anybody else can do about it. He put a light around you, a glow around you. We're gonna start praying. We're gonna start praying. And we go. Praise God. India. Oh oh, sorry. God, he he he's he's Praise God. He's pointed you out and there's nothing no one there's nothing no one can do about it. Praise oh, God. Praise God. Worried about he's gonna take care of it. And he's gonna take care of it in your face. So he so you know God got you. Your testimony is for real for gonna be God has me. He has he has really had me. Your testimony is really gonna be he is daddy God to me. Amen. He's Jehovah Amen. Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi, he's a healer. You no, know, he's daddy to you. Come on, yes. Amen. Daddy to you. Oh, girl, you're so powerful. Sometimes, sometimes we don't even be knowing how powerful we are. Sometimes we don't know, and then and that thing happened, just boom, and then it, it just come out. I love, I love my sisters. Y'all just, ooh, it's just nice being around people that got power, you know. But praise God. Okay, let's let's get into these prayers because I'll I'll sit there all day. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God is good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, well let's 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 go into prayer. We're gonna do similar to what we well not similar. We are gonna do what we did last night. Um, as we after we pray through these scriptures again, we're gonna pray through Isaiah forty three and Philippians uh, three. We're gonna pray the the word, and uh, we're gonna pick a name of someone. I think we have a pretty even number. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's well odd five of us, but we're gonna pick pick a name. And you're gonna pray for that person out loud regarding these scriptures and whatever else God leads you to pray. We're gonna pray them out loud. Okay, while well, you choose to come off mute or or off of on mute or off of mute, but I'll, I will alert you when we get ready to do that. Praise God, Hallelujah! So, Lord God, we just thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you for your people. I think we got all female presence tonight. So, Lord God, I thank you for the women of God. I thank you for your Proverbs thirty one women. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, that these are women of courage. These are women of integrity. These are women of honesty. These are women of honor. Lord God, these are women of love. Hallelujah. Lord God, these are women of peace. These are women of gratitude. These are women of meekness. These are women of modesty mentality. These are women that are going to prosper. These are women that are millionaires. These are women that are book writers. These are women that are worship starters. These are women that are fire starters. These are women that are demon slayers. These are women that won't back down in the face of the enemy. These are women that pray and fast over their children. These are women that pray and fast about their job. These are women that pray and fast because they want to be in your face and in your presence. These are women that don't come that come to church to worship you in spirit and in truth. These are women that live a life of worship. These are women that live a lifestyle of praise. These are women that will keep their hands lifted into the end of day saying hallelujah Jesus Christ is God. And I thank you for them. I thank you for this for this time of commune with my sisters in Christ. Thank you Lord God that we're being strengthened even now. Hallelujah. I just see iron and that's the word of God, iron sharpens. I see just iron. I see just cheering, cheering, sparks flying from us, just being gathered here on one accord. Hallelujah. 
some maybe some of y'all may have thought you didn't really have a, 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 a no, not much of nothing. No, God said, when you got God, that's everything you need. Don't put yourself down regarding the things of God. Don't, don't put yourself as dummy as, as the things of God. Don't put yourself as that. Don't, don't put yourself as that. God will use you because you want to and your desire. Hallelujah. He can do so much with someone that wants. Someone can know all the books of the Bible. Someone can, can I still can't do the little song, Genesis 6. I got teared up. I'm, I'll get you wrong after Genesis. Someone someone can know the order front to back. They can be uh, down in hermeneutics, apologetics. They can they can break down everything. They can exog the text, isog the text. They can have everything and not have the presence of God because they don't have a want to. When you have a want to, a desire to truly be in God's face and you truly want to be, God can use you mightily. Hallelujah. So don't put yourself down in God. That's the complete opposite of his character. Complete opposite. Be lifted up. Be charged up. Hallelujah. You're going to be charged up tonight to walk around feeling confidence I just feel our backs cracking into space, into place, and our necks getting higher, and our heads lifting up higher because we know who we belong to. Hallelujah! God, be like Sister Nakisha and call on Daddy God. We belong to Him. Woo! We what are our heads down for? Ain't no hunchback of Notre Dame in the spirit. We're gonna stand up strong. Praise God! Let's pray these scriptures. Where am I at? Philippi I got Philippians. Let me go to Philippi. Okay. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that we are forgetting those things which are behind. And we have the desire, the will to reach for the things which are ahead. We will set our minds on things above and not beneath. I hope y'all are praying with me regarding this scripture. Lord God, we set our minds on things above and not beneath, Lord God. We reach toward the mark. We'll finish the race strong. We won't tap out early. Hallelujah. No, no, no. We won't stumble and tap out early. We'll continue on, Lord God, because you're face will be shining on you. You said in, in the book of Numbers that you'll put your, your, your light, it will shine upon us and give us peace and give us peace, oh God. You're giving us peace, oh God, that we won't tap out, that those burdens won't become too heavy because they don't belong to us in the first place. Hallelujah. So God, we will obey your word and do that one thing but that requires us to be to be to be open and to be able to be filled by you forgetting those things which are behind us oh god forgetting the past hurt forgetting forgetting who did us wrong hallelujah forgetting who robbed us of something in a season hallelujah casting down any word curse any word curse if any man you've dated holla because i know this was me that after because you didn't want to be with that man and he said you ain't gonna ever be with nobody that's gonna treat you how i'm gonna treat you ain't nobody gonna take care of you and it seemed like there's just been issues in the dating world we break that in the name of jesus we break that in jesus name we no longer carry those word curses in the name of jesus we take out whatever acceptance we did because of the soul tied to that person and we break the cord in the name of the acts of God be against that spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we are forgetting those things and we reach toward the new thing. Oh God, we reach for you, Father God. We reach for you. Things that are ahead. We want to look prophetically and say, God, speak, Holy Spirit, speak to us individually regarding on what we need to be focused on. Some of us, it's our finances. Some of us, it's our home. Some of us, it's just the practice of keeping our homes clean. Some of us, organizing a closet like me. I don't mind telling on myself. Some of us, it's just getting things in order. Some of us, it's about being on time. Some of us, it's about doing something different with ourselves some of us it's just about talking to the person god's been asking us to speak to hallelujah we'll look for things that are ahead thank you jesus let's go to the next scripture what was that there? yes all right going into isaiah Ooh, something about when you read stuff in the Old Testament, it just gets in my bones. You just know it's going to be good because they didn't have the, the what the New Testament had. You know, they didn't have Jesus walking with them. It was just God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's what we got. God and we got the Holy Spirit. We got help. Hallelujah. Lord God. 
we will not remember. There's a reason why we read Philippians first, because we will no longer remember the former things, which means to set our mind on, to, to predicate, to reminisce on. We will no longer remember the former things. And when they do slap through our mind, we'll cast them down. We're not going to sit and fantasize about Nathan. We're going to cast them down, Lord God. And nor we consider the things of old. We're not even going to consider the things of old, when the enemy brings up that person you used to date and you knew it was toxic, you knew it was a mess because you get lonely and ain't nobody here for me and I might as well just go back. No, the devil's a lie. We won't even consider going back to things where doors have been closed. We won't knock on any other closed door that's put behind us. In the name of Jesus, almost like, who was that, Potiphar's wife? When God said he would deliver him, deliver Potiphar, and, and he burnt he burnt down, was that Sodom and Gomorrah at all burnt down? And, and, and Potiphar, he let them get away. And what did the wife do? The Lord gave them instructions and said, leave the former things behind you. Because the wife was so attached to what her life was before she turned around with the Bible. Said, she turned to a pillar of salt. Got salty. We would not be salty by looking back on our past and being like, oh, it was better back then. No, it wasn't. There was heartbreak back then. There was distrust. There was abuse. There was misuse. There was evil. We won't look back and reminisce on what the devil was doing. How we break that tie. We're our children of God. Hallelujah. We're in marvelous light now. Thank you, Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we accept the new thing you're doing in our life, which is bringing us closer to you. The new joy we're experiencing. The new righteousness we're walking in. The new joy. The new peace we have. The more discernment, Lord God. The new things we're seeing in the spirit like never before. Angelic encounters. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord God, because we'll be intimate with you, knowing and discerning when the times are changing, when things are shifting, when it's time to be quiet, when it's time to open our mouth, we will discern the times of the seasons changing. And we thank you, Lord God, that in the wilderness season, God, there's a road. And we decree, decree and declare now that we'll have vision to see the road in the wilderness, Lord God, that we'll take that road. Hallelujah, Lord God, that in the desert, you're sending water to flow. And you know what brings the water? Thank you, Holy Ghost, because the Bible says, that out of us will flow rivers of living water, right? So when we see this scripture and rivers in the desert, when you're in the desert, you still have God. You can speak that inside of you and say, God, this river that flows from me, I walk in it. I walk the stream. The currents go in the direction that, that push me toward my destiny. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the new things you're doing in our lives. Thank you, God, for the new blessings from the small to the medium and to the big, Lord God. Let it all blow our mind. Let us be so gracious and have much gratitude for the things you're doing. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, and we will not fall victim to the lust of the eye, Lord God, but instead we will continue to flee from sin and temptation through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, our helper. Father God, we endow Lord God, endow us more with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, because sacrifice is good. I declare that we will know, know how to live sacrificially, Lord God, saying no to our flesh, that we will begin to weigh the cost of our decisions, Lord God. Let us see it before we see it, God. Hallelujah. We are light, not darkness. We will shine in singleness and we will rebuke the lies that come from Satan because he's the father of lies. Tells us in John 8, 44, he is the father of lies. We rebuke every lie and say, Satan, get thee behind me. We will shine in singleness. Hallelujah. We come against every wavering spirit. When you feel like you're being tossed to and fro, that we will be steadfast and will remain the course. Hallelujah. We come against every taunting spirit. That's picking fun at us and, and, and that's coming to our mind and saying that we're a failure, that we're no good, that we're that we're, we're, we're washed up goods, that we're just no good to anybody. Hallelujah. Your children are not a burden to you. You're still a man's choice. You're still what a man is praying for. It's just more gifting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that there's someone that's that's called and supposed to be with you and that we will remain hidden in Christ because God says we will be to be hidden, to be hidden in Christ. So that way, any man that find us has to find God, has to get into a place of God to see us. Thank you, Jesus, Lord God. And I pray that we be OK, that we surrender to being hidden in God. 
Come on, we gotta be okay with not being in the front line. We gotta be okay when not having every guy like our pictures and story. We gotta be okay with the brother not asking how we doing. We gotta be okay with our booty not getting looked at. We gotta be okay with our with our outfits not being complimented and the other girls was. We gotta be okay and we have to do it with the right spirit. To not talk bound about nobody. To not call nobody out of their name because of how they look because we feel like we have failed in our season because we feel lonely in our season. Oh, that's the realest thing he ever wrote. Praise God. So Lord God, we release strength. Release strength. Hallelujah. I release strength, I release might, I release restoration over all of us in the name of Jesus. Strength to continue on, the might to still fight, restoration to give us peace and let us know that we that God, you restore us and keep us and that we are not crazy. You shall experience life and life more abundantly in your single season. Life more abundantly is not when you get the husband, the, 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 the good sex and the house. It's now. It is now. Thank you, Lord God. It is now. Thank you, Jesus. Learn. We have to learn to take care of ourselves. Oh, God, help us to treat ourselves well. To go get pedicures because it makes us feel good. To get our hair done and learn how to do our hair to make us feel good. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Lord God, because we are precious. God says we are precious to him. We are precious to him. And Lord God, we surrender to you to let you show us all these things in a life that we have to walk out in reality. Because we still have to walk out these things, Lord God. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, your helper and your comforter that's going to show us how to walk these things out. And there's grace. A righteous man falls seven times and he still gets back up. There may be mistakes, but we will not be disobedient. For the word of the Lord says that there are sons of disobedient that don't belong to him. We are children of God. We belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. We belong to you, righteous father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now we're going to take these last few minutes and we're going to stretch these minutes out all the way till 10, maybe even 10.05 if we can. And we're going to pick a name. And we're going to call their names out in prayer regarding the scriptures that we went over, which to sum up is that way they do not sit in the old ways that their minds don't be quick to jump back when they when they're going through something or something happens that we don't necessarily like. But we will keep our mindset on things above that God will use our community that we're in to strengthen us and to guide us, that we put aside comparison and jealousy and envy regarding each other as women. And we lift each other up because we need each other. We can relate to each other more than anyone else can as women and being in the body. And on top of that, the Holy Spirit will even show us more to help and to encourage and build one another up. I'd rather hear the truth about my sister or my brother in the Lord than somebody out on the street. It may sting a little bit when someone in, in, in the body of Christ is telling me about something about myself. But when I know it's God, I can rejoice and say, thank you for being obedient. Let us be quick to want to receive rebuke and not be upset and not and not whiplash or backlash when we receive rebuke because it's good for us. Though you slay me, he chastised those he loved. His rod and staff, them things would hurt them sheep, but it kept them in line. Thank you, Lord God. Let us not be sensitive to rebuke where we want to dismiss and act out in rebellion, but that we want to submit and honor, not the, not the person, not the person, but you, Lord, and be thankful and have love for that person because they're a child of God. They're in the body of Christ. Because only, only people that are, are considered children of God are in the body, not people in the world. People, children of God are in the body. That's, that's just what, what the words say. So hallelujah, let's take this time to pick a name. There's only a few of us on here and pray for that sister like it's you. Pray her through. You don't know what people got going on. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Pray that person through. Praise God, me included. Don't miss, don't skip me. But praise God, we're going to pray them through and we're going to be strong. We're going to be fervent. We're going to pray hard. We're going to pray hard. Let's go. Who am I going with? Bree, I'm, I'm going to call your name out. Lord God, I thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus, for my sister Bree, 
Hallelujah. And if you want to come off mute, you can do that. If you don't, that's fine. If you if you want to hear or, or however. Lord God, I thank you for my sister Bree. I honor you, Lord God, for her life, that you formed her in your image and your likeness, Lord God. I thank you that she's growing in your likeness, Lord God, that you're building her up, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for her sweet, sweet spirit. I thank you, Lord God, for her surrender to you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for saving her and keeping her. I thank you, Lord God, that in due season, she's going to reap a harvest, Lord God, that nothing that she has went through or experienced is in vain. Hallelujah, Lord God. But you're doing it right now, Lord God. You're showing her visions right now of what you're going to do for her life. And I pray she not be intimidated. Hallelujah. I pray she not be afraid of the things you're showing her, that she have confidence that if God is showing it, he's the same God that will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. That he'll show you that it's me that did it. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for remembering Bree. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for remembering her, Lord God, and keeping her. I thank you that her praise is authentic and you receive it well. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I pray that she encounter you on another level. Thank you, God. Take her there. Take her to the next level, Lord God. Let her experience your glory. Hallelujah. Let her have angelic encounters, Lord God. Take her in other realms and dimensions and show her how powerful you really are. Thank you, Lord God. Show her, Lord God. Wreck her life with your glory, with your presence, Lord God. Cover her all with your oil. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep her with you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. As you touch her friend circle, Lord God, that if anyone be around her that is not growing at the capacity or that the desire that she's willing to, Lord God, that you move them out the way or bring, bring them up to speed, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I thank you for making her a leader, God. I thank you for making her a leader, Lord God, that she can be a voice of reason in her friend circle. Thank you, Jesus. That she's the one that brings up prayer. She's the one that brings up the scripture. That, that, that when they say something, that she she immediately, well, there's a scripture for that. There's a word for that. Well, let's pray about that. So God, keep that on her lips. So God, keep it on her mind. Keep it on her heart. Because it's working for her friends more than we even think it would work. Thank you, Lord God, for using her and not forgetting about her. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I thank you, my sister Tiffany. I thank you for her love for you. I thank you, Lord God, that she chooses to get on her knees and pray and spend time with you. I thank you that she chooses to do it because it's a choice. Thank you, Lord God. It's a choice. It's a choice to submit to God. Woo. It's a choice. It's a choice to get down on your knees and say, God, whatever you want to do with me, do it in this hour. It's a choice. Hallelujah. It's a choice. And I thank you that she chooses to worship and spend time with you. I pray you stretch her in her time with you. Even if it's just the eight minutes that she may give you, Lord God, that you do what only we know you can do in that time frame, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you for her life. I thank you for her prosperity. Thank you, God, because you've kept her through so much. And I thank you, Lord God, that she still has her youthfulness look to her. Not saying that your old sister, but God's kept your youthfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Through all you've been through, he's kept your youthfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you for my sister, Nakisha. Thank you, Lord God, for her womb. Thank you, Lord God. Everything she's supposed to birth before the end of this year, let it come forth in the name of Jesus, Lord God, because there's a push. Thank you, Lord God. Ah, I, thought I, was, see, I posted that earlier today, and maybe that was for you to see. I don't know if you saw it on my story or not, but I pray that she push in this season, Lord God. This is the hour for you to push. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I know it's tough and I know it doesn't look pretty, but you have to push. Jesus, 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 you have to push. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have to push. You got to push. You have to push. Thank you, Jesus. Push, 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 push. And push is pray until something happens. You got to pray until something happens. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord God, because it's going to break. Hallelujah. The levees will break and water will flow. You got to push. Hallelujah. Continue to push and get in his presence. Even if it's just a cry, you just saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Just push, 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 push into his presence. Push into his presence until something happens for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to share this really quick so we can all see if maybe somebody didn't see what was on my story. But this, earlier today, I wish I had the timestamp on it, but earlier today, I was just sitting at work and I felt this push. Like I felt this push into my lower abdomen of my stomach. And I was like, man, and it just says some of us just need to hang on and push. Don't stop now. Push, pray until something happens. There's more prayer that God's requiring out of us as people of God. There's more prayer because he wants people that can have ears that's consecrated to hear what he's saying to his people. He has things he wants to say. And he's ready to say them. It's not going to take everybody's high bishop to hear. You can hear. We can hear too. We got to pray until something happens. Hallelujah. So I put I push her through the push. Ooh, I push her through the push. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I push her through the push. Thank you, Lord God, that it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. That we'll end this year with a smile on our face. We may be tired, but we'll still have a leap in us. We'll still have rejoicing in us because we're going to push this thing out to the end. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sis, I, I think there's another service I'll be doing again. <laughs> like last year, I thought I was done. I thought it was just a one and done thing. God said, no. I said, well, all right. I submitted the paperwork to church last night. So I need you for that. Not going to talk too much because it ain't been authorized yet, but just in your ear. But praise God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. I thank you for your people. I thank you just for my sisters. I thank you for what you're doing in all of our lives, Lord God. I thank you that we're growing in you, that we're learning more about you, that we're learning and we're tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. And this is the only place we want to be just with the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you that we're having a desire to come home and just want to be in your presence. Even if it's in the shower, we're just saying hallelujah to thine be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We just with the suds, just spending time with God. Thank you, Jesus. Because as we spend time with God, he's stripping things off of us. Whew, they stripping things away. And it just takes spending time with God. And he does so much when we choose to spend time with God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of our God. Amen. Well, that is all that, that I had for us this evening. And that's all that God has pressed me to do. When he stops, I stop. We're not going to do something that's out of our own selves. That ain't God. <laughs> But we, I thank you all for being with me again. And if anybody has anything they want to share, if you want to stay, I know we're over a few minutes, but might as well push it to five minutes. If anybody wants to share anything or any just words of encouragement, feel free to do so. And then I have a quick announcement and I'll let us leave. Praise God. Let me see the chat. Some people I know I can't come off mute. Let me read. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Thank God. Let's give a hand clap for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 